for staying with us. My name is Victor Lo, and this is People and Politics, and this is KBC Channel One. Now in studio, I have with me via Zoom, I have uh, Joseph Smeka and Dr. Masanga joining me via Zoom, and in studio, I have Joseph Rotich, Dr. Joseph Rotich, joining me as well here. We repeat, the issue of social distance must be taken care of. That is why we are doing it as it is right now. So, gentlemen, we are back. Now, my question is, can Parliament change anything in the document? Let me start with you, Dr. Rotich. Can Parliament change even a comma in that document? According to what we are uh, reading, because I'm not an expert in the law, yeah. but as per what the... What the, the different lawyers actually have approached up the whole thing. Yes. And um, they are saying by adding a dot or any, anything that, is, that was not originally captured mm -hmm. in the PPI, you will, have, you will have purported to have changed the People's Driven Initiative. Yes. And it will become a parliament document. And then there are others who are saying the parliament cannot be a confair appeal. It cannot be a rubber stamp to stamp only a document that is passing by. Mm. They love to bring some changes. Now with the two, what does the Constitution say about the two situations that we are now facing in? Mm -hmm. If we, yes, if it was me from the layman point of view, I would have said since Parliament is a representative of the people, since they are representing the majority of us in Kenya, they can as well alter or rather try to put a correction from where it was wrong and the Parliament that the document is passed through or forward to the, mean, the public for the, for, the, for the referendum. Because finally, it is the people who, will find, who have the final decision. Uh -huh. So in this case, when we say you cannot add a dot, yet we know this is a document that is already fault. Yes. What, what, do we exactly, what are we exactly, exactly saying? And then the committee of um, the legal affairs met. They were also different downright uh -huh. about the whole issue. If I mean, these are the people who have been working on the documents. Yeah. They have read the documents. They have seen the difference between the one that they are calling right and the one that is called the wrong document. Mm. And they are divided among themselves. Well, how, do they, how, what, how do they expect Kenyans to come into a consensus and say, yes, this is what we are going to fought? Yes. So there will still be a problem. Yeah. Until and unless the problem is addressed, we cannot pass a wrong document just because we want to please a, a, mean a, a clique of people. We have to put it right first before we take it, because this one will be our document. Mm. It will be our own document. It will manage us. It will govern us. So we must agree on what is going to be in this document as we move forward. Okay. That is the bottom line. Okay. Dr. Masanga, the, 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 pro, the product and the document itself is a people's initiative, and therefore it has no effect with the politicians or parliament amending even a comma. So, what is the document doing in Parliament? Do the politicians have anything to do with it at this stage? No. No. The Constitution, Ms. Dr. Rotich knows very well, is a, government, a governance expert. The Constitution of Republic of Kenya today does not have a provision for the, for the Parliament to open any popular initiative document that passes through them. They only vote, they only look at it, they send it ahead. Article 257 of your constitution says, in, and let me read for and teach my brother, Dr. Rotich, it says, the promoters of the popular initiative shall deliver the draft bill and the supporting signatures to the independent electoral boundaries commission, which shall verify repeat, that initiative if supported by at least one million signatures. Five, it is said the independent electoral and boundaries commission is that if it's satisfied that the initiative meets the requirements of this article. And these are very very key issues that my brother Rotich should take. The commission shall submit the draft each to each county assembly for consideration within three months after the date it was submitted. There is nowhere in your constitution of the Republic of Kenya which says parliament again sits in their chamber 
and breaks down the chicken, cut it in two wings. Let me say literally, cut one wing because I make eat the chicken and myself. We like chicken so much. Cut one, cut one limb. No, they let them read it. Any government governance expert like Rotich, do you know why there are three arms of government? Do you know why? Yes. You are a PhD holder. Three arms of government. If you have a contentious matter about this omnibus bill, you will come back to the court. You will come back to the court when the bill has been assented to by the president. You come back to the court. Another alternative, Mr. Rotich, uh, Dr. Rotich, is parliament itself can initiate its own bill. But you don't touch the People's Initiative Bill. I, do, I am so shaken to see Orengo, Otiende, his men read law. But I better teach them again. Maybe some of them have lost their money because of politics. This bill cannot be cut like a chicken. Until you go back again, amend that article that says Parliament must look through the bill. Then now you can start looking through the bill. The MPs slept on the job. This article has been there with them for almost ten years. <coughs> they should have actually repealed yes. that article. That when it comes from the, we can't be conveyor belts. We okay. must see, we also see what they have written. All right. What about if they have written that we should be arrested? Okay, okay, you know, okay. And we just okay, okay, Dr. Masanga. Okay, Dr. Masanga, let me bring in so Masanga here. Dr. Masanga, uh, thank you. Let, let me bring in Masanga here. Can I uh, finish? I am, okay. I am saying, one second. I'm saying, Mr. Oro, we can argue up to heaven or oh, hell. There are people who don't want this BBI. The group is very clear, it's yes. known. And the man speaking for it is seated near you there. Mm -hmm. They don't like it. They don't like it. That's why you are going to ask the next question. What next? Because they want to frustrate the time. They okay. want to make All time right. not available for the referendum. Okay, okay. Let, let, let me, let me not bring lying. in Simeha here. Thank, thank, thank you, Dr. Dimasanga. Um, Simeha, just, just, to, just to bring in some um, sense to this. So if the document doesn't die, or if the document it doesn't get amended as is uh, in Parliament, will it now go to a referendum as a whole document? Uh, thank you, Victor. To the very best of my knowledge, uh, based on um, also what I've read in the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya, yes. sub Article 10 of that, Article 257 says that if either of the Houses of Parliament fails to pass it, mm -hmm. It goes the people. That is for a document that uh, is for, uh, th through, has come through a popular initiative. Sub Article 10 says that if either of the houses, that meaning Senate or National Assembly, fails to pass it, it goes to the referendum, or if it has any of the provisions under Article 255, those mm -hmm. are the people like to call them protected provisions. You know, like yes. the tenure of the president. Uh, and so on and so forth, devolution and so on and so forth. So from that, again, to the best of my knowledge, I see the document going ahead to go to exactly. What is better than saying that if we have a contentious document, let, it, let us send it to the people of Kenya for a final say. Why do we want a small group to be the ones to have a final say? when it's a popular initiative, and even when it has contentious uh, content. Why then don't we say, let's pass it on to go to the people of the Republic of Kenya? They will have the final say, not just about 300 people in parliament, but all the registered voters of the Republic of Kenya give them a say. The time for agreeing or disagreeing on content is gone. It's completely gone. I don't, unless you are beginning a new process. But that time for agreeing or disagreeing on content is totally gone. That window is shut. Let me, let, me give, let me give you a bit of speculation, Victor. My suspicion. Yes. My suspicion from the grapevine is that um, 
of course, a project, a project like this cannot lack uh, mischief. So there was a bit of mischief. Exactly. People were sleeping on the job when this was happening. They feel outdone. They are waking up too late, hoping that they can come up with something that can allow them to correct what they think they missed at some point. Too late. When they should have been awake and alert, when should they should have helped you know, their, their leader to ensure that this mischief does not affect this process adversely. They were not there. They were not, they were not there, or maybe they, they were not given opportunity, I don't know. But to me, they were not there. So it appears to me that uh, people are waking up and, and, and realizing that, oh my goodness, we've been outdone. Mm. How, what can we do? How can we sort of stop this thing uh, if we can correct uh, these things that we don't like? And I absolutely agree with Rotich there that yes, Rotich farm, there's been some mischief, but does that stop the process? I doubt that constitution because of that mm. mischief where some party outdid another one, uh, you, can, you can stop such a process. Yeah. So I, I see it going forward. Okay. So um, coming back to you, Dr. Rotich, <laughs> there are um, some splits, of course, right now. Uh, we have got Utienda Molo, we have got uh, CR Senator James Orengo, who are saying that, uh, you know, they are on the majority side of the report. Does this have to worry ODM leader Ray Ludinga? I think, uh, uh, Victor, yes. there is a notion that, um, or a narrative that Dr. Matsanga is, trying to, is driving her. Uh, mm. when, when we are analyzing a document based on the information that we have, yes. we are not opposing or proposing. Mm. We are just analyzing a report that we have received. Mm -hmm. I am an analyst. I have not taken a position that this thing should happen, this should not happen. Yes. So we should not play politics on small things like this one. Mm. So what I'm saying, um, uh, it does, Mr. Victor, mm. when you look at the whole thing, mm -hmm. we have invested a lot in this document. Yeah. Billion, I mean billions of money has mm. gone into the train. spent. And we cannot, uh, all of, over a whisker, mm. uh, recheck the whole document just because of some minor mistakes. Mm. But if you can remember what His Excellency, His Excellency, the Deputy President, says that, why don't we have an uncontested document in the end? Mm -hmm. Can we agree? The proponents who are saying that we need to, to do some uh, correction mm -hmm. are saying that if we can do it and we are in agreement with the correction that we can make, mm -hmm. and it goes to the public, I mean, for referendum, mm -hmm. it will be the good for all of us. Yes. And if you can remember our last discussion, uh, Victor, I say that all of these presidential contestants, yes. they would wish that the PPI is passed as it is. Yes. Not, of course, uh, save, save, I, mean, uh, I mean, putting away some of the contentious issues like the creation of the constituencies. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, as by last week when we were discussing before the issue of the right and the wrong mm -hmm. uh, document, we were in agreement that if this population issue, I mean, not, I mean if this constituencies issue mm -hmm. that was actually, I uh, mean, put, can be put aside so that we can fall to the document as it is, we were just home as, as last week. But when this document came up, other information came in or resurfaced that the part of the documents were actually faulty yes. and, the right, and the others was right. And now that we are saying according to the law, what can happen? In the event that we, we correct, what will happen? Mm. In the event that we don't correct, what will happen? Can we push it? And if we have to push it, which, one, which document are we, are we going to push into the referendum? Is it the, the right one or the wrong one, the uncorrected one? So what we are saying, if we as a country mm. believe that this document will solve the myriad of problems yeah. that we have witnessed in most of the elections that we have had, mm -hmm. we must be able to correct those minor mistakes mm. and pass the document. Mm. Because what we are now looking at, we are looking at the bigger picture yeah. of what we are going to get out of the, out of the, the, the PPI. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it is not about who is wrong and who is not right. It is about us agreeing that there's a problem that we must solve. But, but as, as it is, do you think uh, the situation is going to be slightly different, having in mind that, um, you know, the proposers, that is Odium Redore Lodinga and President Uru Kenyatta, are they going to have some kind of an agreement with the contentious issues in the document? Or is it going to pass as it is? This thing already, um, uh, Victor, is already in the public domain. Yeah. It is no longer a document of Right Honorable Raila Oringa or um, Excellency, the, 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 the president. They are the proposers. It is already 
a document that is in public domain. Mm -hmm. It is already be, it is already a public initiative, mm -hmm. and it is already I mean it is driven by the public. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what they can only give is their goodwill mm -hmm. about the direction of the document. And that is why they were saying, hey, look at it. Mm. Can we solve these small issues and we pass this thing to the referendum? Mm. The, it is the people who will actually finally give the last say. Mm. And that is actually the position. The issue of whether they will say yes or no, the originators of, all the, of this document are the two great men. Yes. These are the originators. Mm -hmm. And if they can agree and say, yes, Kenyans, let us look at these small, small issues, let us outdo with them, and then we move on with the document that we shall all agree as our document, mm. that will be the better way to go. Mm. So the issue is about what is legal and what is illegal. Yes. If, say, we correct it and somebody goes to go the next day mm. and say this was a public initiative, now you are changing into a parliament initiative, what will happen? Yeah. Those are some of the contentious is that we must look at it before we take it to the referendum. Mm. It is not about taking it first after which we go to the court. Yeah. That is not the way to go. Absolutely. It's about taking forward a document that has been fully agreed mm. by all the parties. Mm. Then we shall have a popular initiative, initiative. that we are actually talking about okay. now. L let, let me just ask Dr. Masanga about this question. Dr. Masanga, does Justice and Legal Affairs Committee's views have bearing on this document as it is right now? The answer is no. Mm -hmm. And you should have listened to what Semeha was saying. Yes. Article subsection 10 of 257 is very clear that if any of these people, either the National Assembly or the Senate, disagree with this, the thing will move for a referendum. Mm -hmm. So if they don't have anything, they can even the streets of Nairobi or undergo anywhere. And I agree this time with Dr. Ratich. Rotiki that, brother, it is a lot of things. Some of these things, we waste a lot of our money, ourselves in Africa. Chebukati went to the committee that was gathering all this. He failed to tell the committee that don't touch boundaries. He was there. He was there. Right. When he waited, Mr. Chief, Dr. Rotich, I respect you on that. My brother, we are all together. We must change this Africa. Our behavior is very bad. Waited. He waited until the thing was brought out. Look at that, Rotich. Then he said, you have touched my constituents. Is that a human being? No. And let me state my position. The bill is a relation bill. Anybody who has read conflict relation, will, like me, I will tell you that the nine points that Kenya has are the nine points that always bring Kenya to a free mood. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a cow which is pregnant and go and build a milking shed when you have not seen the cow. I think Zemeha and the Dr. Rotich know that. You are all farmers. I'm also a farmer. You can't build a shed for milk when you have not seen the calf. You have an election, which is the time bomb. You can't talk about an election when you have not fed this cow properly to deliver the calf. How are you going to your election of 2022? bring you more back. Why was this BBI brought? Why did you Raila shake the hand of Uru Kenyatta? For the first time in history of Kenya, they said, well, our differences is because of an election, which is the cow that will be delivered. If it is not delivered well, Rotic, Shemenya, myself, we shall be running in all directions. My trucks will not pass to deliver goods in Mombasa. If the cow does not deliver well, mm -hmm. that's why the Kenyans must understand. It was a very sorry maker and a rotich for people to hijack this BBI. 
take it into a political process. Okay. Where okay. Orengo, Otiende, and these guys are taking it. Mm -hmm. It was wrong. It was very wrong. And I support the raw MPs 100%. I support them. They have now distanced themselves from brutals. You know, each, each, can I be very brutal? Each group from Julius Caesar, Semeha knows there is a brutal, mm. there is a cashier. Yes. Again, Jubilee, we have okay. brutal. Okay. In the ODM, we have brutal. Than a cash because they want to take the leadership. Mm. We know. But the BBI, the way I know, Laida Amaro Dinga, my editor, fellow fighter, mm. freedom fighter, oh, okay. like okay. me, is <laughs> not oh, going okay. to leave Kenya dismantled. Ruhuru Mwingai Kenyatta will not leave Kenya going to ashes. They okay. want to unite it. They will not right. disagree. They will push their rotich. We shall smile after 2022. And uh, you will greet me when we meet in Elidore or anywhere you, in Malaba. <laughs> because me, you, I'm prepared. I'm also on that same route. Okay, thank you, Daktari. One thank you. One <laughs> okay, let me bring in, let me bring in uh, Simeha here. Simeha, the question is now, if Parliament doesn't agree, okay, and uh, the issue doesn't go to the referendum, are we seeing a situation or a possibility of President Uru Kenyatta's tenure being extended for a particular period? I wonder where that is. I'm hearing, you know, from certain quarters about the possibility of extending the term of the president. And I, wonder, yes, I keep right. wondering, where is that coming from? I mean, I know there are provisions in our condition that are exceptional circumstances mm -hmm. in the term of parliament, term of the president. So far, I have not seen those exceptional circumstances. I do not foresee any possibility uh, of those exceptional circumstances. God willing, of course, we don't have control over our future. Mm. But for people to begin to put I can only foresee, I can see mischief. And for a lot of people who are saying that, I, I see a common, I, I, the, the, there is a certain common trait uh, amongst the people who, the proponents of that narrative of extension, of term extension. Yes. Uh, you are saying if it doesn't go to the referendum, what would stop this document from this bill from going to the referendum? Other than, uh, you know, acts of God that we may not have any control over. Uh, I do not see anything that can stop this from going to the referendum. We've always planned, you know, processes for organizing our country politically, sometimes disorganizing it, and they, they, they go ahead. So I, 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 don't, I don't foresee that. I think that's the narrative that should be completely killed to start thinking that, you know, we should entertain the thoughts of extending the term of the, 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 the current government. We should completely not entertain any such thoughts. And um, even you in the media shouldn't encourage anything like that. It's healthy for us to have, you know, changes in leadership, mm -hmm. uh, changes in, 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 in gov those who are in charge of our governance. Um, and I should hope that, uh, there will be a civic education process um, and, 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 and Kenyans shouldn't wait for politicians to bring them this. Mm. We have done this in the past with help of civil society. We can do that again and we to educate each other on the importance of changes in leadership when that time comes. And nothing save for what we cannot avoid should be allowed, save for what is beyond us. Nothing should be allowed um, to, to, uh, to make us agree or even entertain the possibility of not having a change in leadership as we have said for ourselves in our constitution. So I don't right. see any possibility, Victor. I'm sorry, I've used so many words to say that. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's okay. It's, it's always the best way to express it so that you can make it more clearer to us. Thank you. Um, Dr. Rotich, there seems to be certain crack in the ODM party. We have got... Uh, James Rengo, we have got Utienda Molo, and uh, we have got uh, Kongo Mogeni. All these are of the report, the majority report. Does this make, uh, that, should this worry Odium leader Ray Lodinga? Victor, what we are witnessing in this country yes. Yes. is a growing democracy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Utienda 
and Orengo are in the same party. Yes. Badi is in the same party. Mm -hmm. When you see the simmering differences, you see a situation where democracy is growing. Mm -hmm. And um, when you look at critically what Orengo is saying, mm -hmm. and Otiende, these are uh, very eminent uh, lawyers in this country. Mm. And they know what they are doing. And what they are just proposing is that can we do something in this document before we take it to the people? I mean, they are right. Yeah. In their own, they are actually, what they are actually selling is the idea that majority of Kenyans are actually sharing. Mm -hmm. It is only that these things are being spoken by the same, uh, the two gentlemen. In the same party. The same party. Yes. But I can tell you, uh, Vita, what Kenyans are witnessing now is a true democracy because they speak their minds. Mm. They can even differ when they are friends mm. on issues that pertains the national governance. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I look at it, I, I am proud of it as a Kenyan, yes. because what we are witnessing is a growing awareness among the Kenyans, growing awareness about the management of their own country, growing awareness about what, we, what, what Kenyans would wish to look, I mean, I mean, uh, the, we, 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 I mean before the, others, the, the countries of the world. So mm -hmm. what we are just saying, that this document as it is, uh, Victor, if I was to propose as a layman, I would say, I know in a democratic setup, we disagree to agree. Mm -hmm. So in such a situation, those who are proposing that we, we must improve this document. Mm -hmm. Because amendment, mm -hmm. or um, what we are actually doing, we are beefing up yes. the 2010 constitution. Mm -hmm. And where some people are looking at it as if it is a crisis, we have a constitution in place. And even the extensions of the president term of office or tenure, it is not warrantable as per the circumstances that we are facing now. The 2010 constitution, we can say maybe it is 80%, 90% perfect. Mm. The PPI is just to beef up, yeah. to improve on what we have. Mm. Not to remove what we had, but to improve on what we have, mm. so that we can have a very good document. Mm. So my, 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 my way of looking at it is that um, what is there at PPI, we are at 90%, or if say 95%, uh, good so far. Mm -hmm. Maybe save about 5% that we still call them con uh, yes. contentious issues, mm -hmm. which if I own out, my friend, we shall have the best document ever mm -hmm. in this country called so Are you seeing a situation where at the end of the day there will be some kind of equilibrium? Soberness will prevail. Yes. As my brother Joseph said, mm -hmm. that we don't expect 100% support from our people. Mm -hmm. I mean, there could be some sizable number of people who will say, yes, this is a document that we can even improve as we go along. Mm. But some of these teething issues, I mean, but let me tell you, Nani, uh, yes. creating 70 constituencies is not a small issue in this uh, PPI yeah. issue. Mm. It affects everything. You see, and if that is what we call contentious, I think the best way, way out is to put aside that one for future deliberation by the IEBC mm. during the sober times. Yeah. And we pass that which we believe, that which we we'll trust, and we pass through um, an uncontested kind of referendum, mm -hmm. and we come up with a very good constitution. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, my friend, mm -hmm. uh, the 70 constituencies was not among the major issues that was captured by the PPI. Yes. The major issues are those issues that will address the many marital problems that we have faced after every uh, election, electioneering year. Mm -hmm. So in this case, if this thing was added, and it, has, it is actually spoiling the taste of the, the good document that we have. Why don't we put it aside and we move on? Otherwise, if that, if that will not be done, mm. the public still will resist yes. at the further end. Yes. Why should we push a document that we said let the public decide? Mm. When we know very well we may lose a very good document. 95% yes. of this document is perfect. Mm. It is just good. So you cannot throw a baby along with the, uh, I mean, I mean, you cannot throw the towel along with the baby. Yes. That is my bottom line. I mean, uh, that is my, my tech. Okay. Um, probably, let me just, uh, let me just uh, on this turn newspaper here, let me just give you an overview of some of the provisions that MPs found unconstitutional on the bill. One of them is the creation of 70 new constituencies in some of the 28 counties. That is one of them. Second one is severing the vetting of the ministers, principal secretaries, and secretaries to the cabinet by the parliament. And the third one is slashing the powers of the National Police Service Committee and vesting them on the Inspector General of Police. Uh, another one, the second last one is parameters 
for sharing revenue among the 47 counties and the last one is determining fees paid by professional consultants by county and national government so those are some of the provisions that uh, the MPs found unconstitutional in the bill amongst uh, others that they are, they have been raised there about that is the de delimitation of the constituencies the limitation and the creation of the 70 new constituencies let's take a break shall we we'll be right back after this break